The mainstream media has been pushing the LGBT agenda relentlessly, almost as if its successes would not be possible without all the fanfare. But we must not assume that the steamroller will flatten every enemy. In fact, there are recent signs that it is sputtering, unequal to the task of world takeover. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. First, we'll start with a typical story from recent weeks that demonstrates the pervasive, meddlesome nature of this agenda, which trumps all other concerns in a given situation. Then we'll report on some promising counterexamples. The Rocketry Club at Citrus College in Glendora, California, had earned one of 60 coveted spots for the NASA Student Launch Competition. According to a NASA website, the event strives to provide relevant, cost-effective research and development of rocket propulsion systems. All kinds of schools try to qualify for one of these spots, including Ivy Lake Colleges. So this was quite an honor for the small community college. To borrow a phrase from Shakespeare, now here's the rub. California's Assembly Bill 1887 has implemented a travel ban preventing state officials from traveling to eight states perceived as discriminatory toward the LGBT community, and that includes Alabama, where the NASA event is held. It's possible private financing might allow club members to travel to Huntsville after all by the time you hear this story. Before I go further, I'd like to recommend an attitude toward gays. I get it from 1 Peter 2.17, respect all men. I would also recommend loving everyone and being friendly, even when you disagree with and oppose this agenda. I believe that Dan Cathy, CEO of Chick-fil-A, is one of the most prominent examples we have of walking in this kind of respect, love, and friendship. He invited gay activist Shane Winmeyer, executive director of Campus Pride, to be his guest at the Chick-fil-A Bowl five years ago. In an article in the Huffington Post, Winmeyer called Kathy a friend and had this to say in a short excerpt from the article's embedded video. Dan and I would talk about faith. Uh, we would talk about family. Never once did I hide the fact that I have been together with my husband for 18 years. And Dan respected that. He even asks about my husband when we've met. Dan was very clear that he considers himself to be a Christ-like follower, which in my mind was, was rhetoric and kind of this ministry from the uh, kind of an evangelical base. And I really didn't understand that until Dan described it. And then I actually saw Dan trying to live in the way that he saw Christ would. And that's not the only time they've met. So friends can agree to disagree. Now getting back to the signs that the LGBT steamroller may be losing its momentum. Just the other day, California Judge David Lamp ruled that to force a Christian baker, in this case Kathy Miller of Tastry's Bakery, to create a cake to celebrate a gay couple's marriage would be violence against her religious beliefs. He calls this the stuff of tyranny. Perhaps this will set a precedent. On the other hand, Miller would still be expected to sell the couple an existing product, just not a cake specifically designed for them. The other sign I'd like to mention comes from one of the U.S.'s closest neighbors. Governor John Rankin of the island of Bermuda has just approved a bill repealing gay marriage. The country's Senate and House approved the bill by a wide margin in December after a referendum that opposed the unpopular practice. However, Bermuda still recognizes domestic partnerships for gays. This is an important example. Any law that can be passed can also be repealed. But the so-called legalization of gay marriage in the U.S. was more an act of the Supreme Court than of the legislature. There's a basic principle the court missed that I hope will influence a future court. Former presidential candidate Alan Keyes explained it in an article several years ago in WorldNet Daily. Here it is. One of America's founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. That's actually a summary of a longer passage. We now have a choice. 
Either we agree with the declaration that our rights come from God, which means he guarantees them for us, or we deny the declaration and are left with subjective wishes with no ultimate guarantor. As you may have heard, the Lord does not change and is unaffected by fashion or political correctness. And get this, there is no basis for a government to extend a right not granted by God. So where does this leave us? We respectively disagree with the LGBT agenda. We must love its leaders and followers. And we can see this nation progress by reversing the adoption of standards that have never worked in the past. But we must be willing to work at least as hard as the other side, also remembering this is a spiritual battle. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. 